Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing there this morning? All right, let's all stand. I tell you what, I'm excited this morning. I feel something in the atmosphere. I don't know. I don't know if y'all can feel it, but uh, I tell you what, as we were practicing this morning, I can just I can feel something different, and uh, I'm just so thankful to be uh, in this this awesome sanctuary this morning with uh, with amazing friends, amazing people. Uh, people, you know, y'all are like my family. Um, I tell people that all the time, you know, but I want y'all to know that y'all really are like like family to me, and uh, and I, I love each and every one of you. Um, I've been told several times in my life that I don't meet a stranger, and that's because I like to talk. I'm outgoing. I'm a people person, and, uh, and and so you know, when people come in into this house, you know, even if they're a stranger, they're part of my family um, because you know we're all brothers and sisters in Christ anyway. So. Um, Again, I'm just so thankful and happy to be here, and I hope you're excited about being here as well. I hope you're excited about what God wants to do in this service this morning. I don't know what exactly He wants to do, but I know that He wants to do something. And you know what? If we'll just take everything that we've got going on and just put it behind us and focus on worshiping Him this morning, if we will hunger and thirst after Him this morning, and if we expect Him to come in here and do something, then He's going to show up. Because I serve a God that doesn't fail. He's always been there time and time again. So let's all lift our hands and let's get this atmosphere ready for this time of worship. God, we just again thank you for this beautiful day that you have done. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house once again. Jesus, as we begin to lift up these songs of worship to you, God, we begin to lift up this praise to you. Lord, I pray that it would be satisfying to you. God, I pray that you would just begin to work on our hearts, work on our minds this morning, dear Lord. Jesus, you know the work that's at hand, God. You know the needs that are in this building this morning. God, I pray that you would begin to move on us right now, dear Lord. Jesus, rush in, dear God. And Jesus, we'll give you all the praise and glory you deserve this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all worship with us as we start out with blessed be your name.
the point that I was going to make was the flying hand. It's right to the fellowship hall, okay? We've got a few uh, prayer requests here on my list this morning. Let's remember these families. Missy and Rodney Williams at New Life Baptist Church. Missy is battling cancer. Uh, Dewey Hubbard, Dorinda Webb, Caden Williams, Michelle Stowe, Randy Shelton, and Mike Rome are all battling cancer. Ashley Waller and Landon Hagwood both are continuing treatment. Lisa Hammond uh, recovered from surgery, uh, but did get a good did get to come home. Becca Butler recovered from eye surgery, and Charlie Benninger and Charles Palmer needed uh, healing in their bodies. Skylar Farmer was in a wreck and has recovered from several surgeries, and Hunter Bell recovered from surgery after head-on collision. And let's pray for God to be with all those affected by the COVID uh, recently, as that has kind of went on a spike here with this COVID stuff. Uh, let's just remember these names that appear on our prayer request. And uh, I would like to uh, thank everyone to come out uh, Thursday night uh, for the men's uh, spaghetti supper that came out and helped. And Gerald hit it off pretty big with his uh, chicken spaghetti. Uh, he had a big old pot full, and I don't think there was, there probably wasn't even a to go plate left uh, in that pot when we were done. So uh, we had a good turnout. I asked the Lord if he would just bless me with 25 or 30 people, and we exceeded over 30. So uh, we had a good, good turnout for that. If I can ask my ushers to come on down, uh, we're getting ready to take up our offerings this morning. And while they're making their way down, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for what you do for us. But most of all, Lord, we just thank you for, for providing us the help to do things for you. And Lord, we just thank you for each and every one that's here this morning to worship you. And Lord, we just thank you for our praise team. We thank you for the worship that they uh, bring forth uh, for you is to worship you this morning. And Lord, I just thank you for this tithes and offerings that we're about to receive. We just ask you that you would just break and bless and multiply for the use of your kingdom. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, at this time, we want all of our kids uh, to come up and they're going to bless us with a song this morning.
for the kids is that uh, when we uh, got ready to practice at 9.30 this morning, they came in and they were running to the platform. They were excited and uh, they couldn't wait to get up here and, and sing. And uh, I began to think, you know, as I, as I watched them, you know, that, that sometimes, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, so I don't think I'm pulling anybody out. Sometimes we come into church on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, we're kind of dragging in and all like, up. Oh, you know, I, I, I barely made it. I don't even know how I got here. Um, you know, I'm not very excited to be here, but I'm here. And, you know, times are like that sometimes. Sometimes, you know, life is tough, and uh, it can be heavy on us. But, you know, we can get those burdens off of us by lifting up our praise and worship. So when in finding the strength and the energy and the hunger and thirst to be able to do that, God will begin to lift those things off of you. And uh, I just love the fact that our kids are so excited to get up here and, and sing praises uh, to Jesus. So let's give them a little more hand. And, uh, and we'll awesome God. Y'all worship with us this morning as we sing our God.
that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce. And I have called for a drought on the land and the hills, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, on what the ground brings forth, on man and beast, and on all their labors. What I want to talk to us about this morning, the sermon title is Consider Your Ways. Consider Your Ways. I'm going to ask my dad if he'll say a prayer and message this morning. So we find ourselves here in, uh, in Haggai, and yeah, I, I love here, it starts out verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. The people have said the time has not yet come. Now, I know that we as people, our time is important to us, correct? Correct. And sometimes it seems like there's not enough hours in the day. Um, I know that that's, that's, you know, it's that way for a lot of people. You wish you had more time. You wish you had, you know, you know, uh, you know more capability of, you know, doing certain things. Um, and he, along with that, the time and the energy, you know, sometimes you come home and you spend so much time at work that when you get home, you don't want to do anything else. I know I get like that sometimes. I get home and I just want to put my feet up. I don't want to do anything else. I've done, I poured all my energy into, you know, my, my daily work that I was doing. Um, you know, trying to, you know, you know, earn a living. And uh, I, I saw this, this quote the other day uh, that, that's so famous. And it says, that, you know, so many of us, you know, work to earn a living instead of, you know, you know just, just living to earn, you know, or however it goes. I might have messed it up. But, you know, we get so caught up in doing these things that we forget that we've got to have a life, too. You know, and, and so many times, you know, it begins to take a toll on our, on our family. It begins to take a toll on, you know, our, our spiritual relationship with God. It begins to take a toll on, you know, our, uh, you know, attendance in church and, and, you know, us going out and doing things, you know, for God to try and reach people because we don't have enough energy. We don't have enough time. And that's how we feel. And so many, so so often we get so caught up in that that we forget that we, we have got to make time for God. And we've got to learn to listen to God, listen for Him so that He can direct us and say, hey, not only do I want you to make time for me, but this is what I want you to do with your time. This is what I want you to do. And these people, they thought that the time had not yet come. But then it says that the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. And the word was, is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? While this house lies in ruins. Now, there's one thing, it's one thing to not have enough time. But it's another thing to get so comfortable in doing what you're doing that you don't make the time for God. That you say, well, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hang out here, you know. Now, and, I, and I'm not knocking any of our people. This is, I, I want you to know that I talk to a lot of pastors. I talk to a lot of, of men of God, and uh, this is something that is going on all over the country. But don't, don't get me wrong. I love technology. I love the fact that we can live stream. And if you're live streaming with us this morning, thank you. God bless you. We're glad that you're following us. But this has become an excuse not to come into this house. Amen. It's become an excuse. You know what? If we can't come into the house, we'll just follow it on live stream. You know, God wants you in this house. He wants you in this place. And, you know, what always goes back in my mind, because y'all know that, that I love, you know, not just Georgia football, but I love all sports. I love anything like live, like music. Now, I can take and I can put somebody on the TV that's got a lot of concerts 
and watch it, and yeah, I'd probably get some enjoyment out of it. But I can go ahead and tell you, if I was at that concert, it would be completely different. Completely different. Because you can feel something in the atmosphere. That music, as, as Casey likes to uh, get on to me all the time, you know, she, she tells me, you know, you listen to your music too loud, and the TV has to be too loud, you know, when we watch these movies and stuff like that. And I tell her, I say, it's because I want to feel it. I want to feel it down deep inside. You know, when, when, like, when something bad happens and, like, the bass hits or something like that, I want to feel it down, like, in my, in my stomach, like, oh, no, something bad's about to go down. You know, I, I love being in Sanford Stadium, you know, when you're watching, you know, the quarterback drop back and you see him pass the ball and all of a sudden your eyes go from the quarterback and you see, you know, Brock Bowers or something streaking, you know, 10 yards from a guy and all of a sudden the ball falls in his hands and next thing you know, he's running to the end zone and you can, you can feel the atmosphere change in that moment. You can feel people getting up out of their seats. You can feel... There's like a, a, a little, little bit of a hush right before a huge roar. Right before a huge roar. It's the same thing in the house of God. I, I love the live stream. I'm not against it. I keep on doing it. Because I want to provide a way for people to still view our services and things like that. But I never want it to become ex an excuse for not coming into church. For not coming into this house. <clears throat> and, and not just this house, but the church has taken a hit over the last few years. And I understand it. We, we've had a global pandemic. I get it. We have been living in some crazy times. I said that Wednesday night, you know, in my message, I talked about hope and that how we are living in difficult times. But I want you to know that all generations have come through difficult times. Whether it be one thing or, you know, another. Whether it be a global pandemic or a world war or, or something. Something. There's always something going on. And it's going to be the same thing with your life. There's always going to be something going on. You know, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, me and Casey were always told when we were, you know, thinking about starting a family. We were like, well, you know, we don't know because, you know, money's tight right now. And the one thing that everybody told us, don't wait until... You know, you got money because, you know, you'll never have kids. You'll never have kids. And um, so we kind of took that advice and we stepped in and, uh, you know, God just blessed us. He's continued to bless. He's continued to provide. You know, he, he's did the same thing for this church. There have been times where I know that we've been tight, you know, in, in the bank account and all this stuff. And, you know, the lights have never been cut off on this place. Well, not. Not that, to my knowledge, you know, not uh, on purpose. So, maybe on accident. Or maybe we were on a schedule to cut off because of the, that was a mistake. But anyway, thank God for Sister Becky. She handled that. Uh, but, you know, God, God continues to provide. If we keep on doing the things that we're supposed to do, if we keep on following Him, if we keep on worshiping Him the way that He you know, yearns for us to worship him, he is going to provide. But when we've got this mentality of, you know what, I'm just going to sit back in my home. You know, I'm just going to sit back and, you know, in my comfort zone. And, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just do this over here when God wants you somewhere else. He wants you doing something somewhere else. He wants you building his house. And I want you to know this morning, this, is, this isn't my house. And honestly, it's not your house. This is his house. This is his house. He has put us over this house. So it's our job to make sure that it's maintained. It's our job to make sure that this house is built the way that it's supposed to be. And I tell you, when you're building a house, you want to make sure you build it right. You want to make sure you build it sturdy. I talked about this, uh, I can't remember when exactly it was, but you know, that, that's one thing that I've always admired about my dad and, uh, and, and Brother Lance Wade and, and different people that I've worked with. And when they build a house, they build it solid. You know, they, they don't, you know, cut corners. It's built the way that it's supposed to be built. And uh, that's something that I've always taken with me. You know what? If you're going to build a house, it better be strong. And it better be built the way that it's supposed to be built. It says that they dwell in this, these panel houses while this house lies in ruins. 
Now, what house was God talking about? Or excuse me, well, it was God talking through Haggai. What house was they talking about? It was the temple that Solomon had built. Solomon had built the temple. Does anybody remember Solomon? Solomon was, was said to be the, the most wise man that, that ever walked the earth. And he had built this temple, and it had gotten torn down. And it just sat there for all these years. And they didn't do anything about it. Instead, they built up their own houses. They made sure that their houses were, were sturdy and that they were in place. And they had, you know, they, they got their, their fields ready. It says here in verse 6, it says, You have sown much and harvested little. That verse, that verse makes me really sad. That verse makes me really sad that somebody, you know, obviously they put in the work. They did what, you know, that they thought that they needed to be doing. But their spirit wasn't right. Because God's house was left behind. It wasn't being thought about. You know, I began to think, you know, as a, you know, as far as, you know, like a financial aspect. You know, you can go out there and, and you can work and work and work and work and work so hard, you know, and, um, you know, you can be doing all this to try and get ahead. But if you don't have your heart right with God, it's going to be hard to receive the blessing that he wants to give you. In this verse here in 6, it says, it says, he who earns wages does so to put them into bags with little holes. Bags with little holes. We don't understand that we're, we're, we're missing some of our blessing. We're missing some of our blessing when we, when we don't have things in order the way they're supposed to be. When our worship isn't where it's supposed to be. But God, God, he made a simple statement right here. He said there in verse 5, it says, Consider your ways. Consider your ways. I've said this before, but so many times, you know, we, we don't understand, you know, why we're going through this or why we're struggling with that. When sometimes, and I know this is true for me, all it takes is looking in the mirror. All it takes is me saying, you know what, I'm the reason that I'm struggling. I'm the reason that I'm going through this. It's not because God wanted me to. And we all know that, you know, with, with certain choices, there comes consequences. You know, and it's our choice. We choose whether or not we want to serve God. We choose whether or not, you know, we, we come in and sit in these pews. We choose whether or not we, we sing the songs and, and lift our hands and get lost in worship. That's all our choice. God's not going to come down here and make you do any of it. He's not going to make you. But if you ask him, God, you know, why, why am I not being blessed? You know, I, I come to church every Sunday. Why am I not being blessed? And he looks at you and says, consider your ways. We need to look at what we're doing while we're here. What we're doing while we're here. And I love, it says it in verse 5 and it says it in verse 7. God wanted to make sure that this point got across. Consider your ways. Consider them. And then he told them, he said, go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. That's what God is looking for us to do. He's looking for us to build this place up so that he can be glorified. You know, there's there's so many times that that you know I, I feel like that you know you know people do things so that they can receive the glory, so that they can receive the you know the, the accolades and the, the compliments and all this stuff. And that's one reason why I always you know I, I felt about this position that I am that I'm in that you know I never want it to be about it's definitely because I'm not so good. If God doesn't work in this place, it's not because of me. Now, it might be because of something that is important, 
called obedience. It might be because of my obedience, but it was still God that did the work. It was still Him. And He's the one that deserves the glory. And He's looking to be glorified. It says that the Lord told them, it says, He said, because of my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. Be careful what you busy yourself with. Be careful what's taking up your time. Because here in verse 10, he breaks it down. He says, therefore the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce. If we truly want to be taken care of, we need to give everything we've got to God. We need to consider our ways. Because I don't want to go through a drought. I don't want to go through a time to where we're, you know, we're trying to plant, we're trying to, to sow, and we're not receiving anything from it. A very popular verse during this whole pandemic has been 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And it says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. It says, now my eyes will be open. You want to know how to get God's attention? Pray. Seek his face. Make your ways about him. Don't make them about you. You know, don't, don't, don't make it about something that's not supposed to be about. Make your ways about him. My Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways. When we begin to do that, that's when it's going to catch the Lord's ears. It says his eyes will be open and his ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. And it says, for now, for now I have chosen and consecrated this house. If we want a right now move of God, then we've got to have a right now spirit that's in line with what he wants. We've got to have a right now worship. We can't rely on, you know, what's happened in the past. And we can't get too caught up in what's going to happen in the future because we'll lose sight of what God wants to do right now. Because if we don't give him praise right now, there won't be a future. He wants to do it right now. Jumping back to Haggai, verse 12. It says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Now, that word fear right there, a lot of people kind of get it twisted. It wasn't that they were in fear like trembling, like, you know, oh, we're about to get struck down. This fear that they had, this word means respect. They respected the Lord. They gave him honor. You know, when you give respect to somebody, you give them honor. You hold them in high regard. You listen to what they say. It says that they feared the Lord. Verse 13, it says, And Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, spoke to the people with the Lord's message. I am with you, declares the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltil, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Work on the house. What I want to point out right here is there was a stirring 
of these people before the work took place and before you started to see the progress that God wanted to see. You know, God's not waiting for us to build the house and then pour out his spirit. No, he wants to pour his spirit into you so that he can begin to build the house. That's what he wants. I know that y'all see a lot of empty space in this church, don't you? Now, it's not always, you know, quite this empty. You know, we've got a lot going on. But, you know, I'm not satisfied until this place is filled. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not waiting, you know, I'm not sitting around waiting, you know, thinking, you know, you know I'd love to outgrow this place. We've got to fill this place first. But before we can fill this house, we've got to let God fill us. We've got to let God fill us. When God sees a people that is desiring for his spirit to be poured out amongst them, when he sees a people that is hungry and thirsty for his spirit to be poured out, a people that says, you know what? God, come and wreck my plan. Come and stir me up. Come and get me ready for what you want to do because what you've got planned for me is so much greater than what I've got planned for myself. And I can tell you that with full confidence because that's the God that I serve. I don't serve a, you know, a, a, a you know, not enough God. I serve a more than enough God. I don't serve the God of El Chipo. I serve the God of El Shaddai. And he says he's more than enough. He's got everything you need, everything you desire. And if we would get obedient and follow him with everything that we've got, man, the blessings that would be poured out, not just in this church, but in your families, in your life. But it all starts with obedience. It all starts with a hunger and a desire for God to do something. That's where it starts. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7, it says, Therefore I remind you. Notice, everybody needed a reminder. I'm here this morning to remind us, to remind myself that we need a stirring of the Holy Ghost in this place. It says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And I'm telling you right now that there's not an enemy that can come against you if you've got God on your side because they can't stand it. Amen. It says that he's given us power and authority to crush their heads. He's given us that power and authority. You know, a spirit of fear didn't come from God. Now, this is the, the word fear that I'm talking about. It's trembling. This is people saying that, you know, I, I, I'm really worried. And sadly, sometimes this fear actually comes from people just like these people that were trying to receive a harvest, that they were trying to sow. Sometimes this fear comes from people that, you know, that they come to church and, and they say, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of scared to come down there to the altar. I'm kind of scared for somebody to come lay hands on me. I'm kind of scared to go down there and teach Sunday school and step out of my comfort zone. I'm telling you right now, if you'll take a step, if you'll say, God, I don't know what your plan is for me, but I'm not scared anymore. And I'm ready to come down and receive whatever it is you've got for me. And I'm telling you right now, if you haven't experienced the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, then you're missing out. Because there's nothing like it. It will change everything. It will change your perspective. I've seen grown men up at this altar. Not, not any altar. Not just any altar. Not, you know, the altar, you know, at, at Jensen Franklin's church in Free Chapel. Not at, you know, Joel Osteen's church. No, I've seen it happen right here. Grown men. Teenage boys that, you know, thought that, you know, that, you know, they were the stuff come down here, and when they got obedient, and they knelt down at this altar, and they began to talk to God, God began to tug on their heartstrings, and they began to cry. Tears began to stream down their face. And they were emptying themselves down here at this altar. And you know what happens when you empty yourself down at this altar? Then there's got to be a refilling. 
or a new filter. If you'll pour out whatever it is that's old, then God will say, you know what? I'm about to pour something new into you. I'm about to pour something new into you that you've never experienced before. And it's going to be the greatest thing you've ever experienced in your life. It'll change your vision. It'll change your hearing. It's amazing. He said that he's given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of sound mind. These are all things that, you know, I spiritually want to be working in, but, you know, I want to be working in these things, you know, in my natural sense as well. Now, as far as power goes, I don't want any power over anybody. But I feel that as, you know, he, he, he wants you to be a strong person. He doesn't want you to be sick all the time. He don't want you to struggle. Power of love. You know, God, God's looking for us to love one another. He wants nothing more than, if anything, for us to just love people. But Levi, they don't believe the way we do. Love them. They don't look the way we do. Love them. You know, they're, they're, they're a heathen. You know, they, they, they're, they're drunk all the time and they cause all these problems and, and you know, they just can't get right. Love them. It's as simple as that. You know, one thing that was amazing that, that I've thought about over the years is that God stepped off his throne, robed himself in flesh, came to this earth in the form of Jesus, and it was God. Now think about this. The same God that is going to judge each and every single one of us when we stand before him, but when he was down here on this earth, he did not pass judgment. He did not pass judgment. He loved everyone. He poured that love into everybody. And that's one thing that to me is, is so desirable, desirable about wanting to be like God. When he said, you know, that we needed to, Paul said that we need to be imitators of Christ. That's one of the things that I've always taken with me is, you know what, if Jesus loved everybody, regardless of, you know, whether they were a drunk or a prostitute or, you know, whether they were somebody that wanted to kill him, he loved them anyway. He loved them anyway. And you might say, well, Levi, you know, when there were so many times that he corrected somebody. You can correct somebody with love. You can correct people with love. Now, when correction comes with, like, this anger and stuff like that, then, yes, that's wrong. But Jesus corrected them with love. And one of the last things he said on that cross was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. I kind of feel like that on the back end of that, he didn't say it, but on the back end of that, we could throw that in. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. May they consider their way. Consider their way. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're pouring yourself into. Think about what you're not pouring yourself into. What you're holding back from. God's looking to be praised. He's looking to be glorified. He wants us, he wants us to build this house. You know, in, in three years here, you know, we've, we've had our ups and downs. Some of the lows have been really low. Some of the highs have been just amazing. And the devil has tried to attack us so many different ways. But I, I, I'm, I'm like one of those people that I just I don't want to put the devil on notice. He can't have this house. He won't have this house. And I don't know about y'all. But I want this house to grow so much. 
And before it's going to grow numerically, it's got to grow spiritually. He's got to stir up that gift inside of us. He's got to stir it up. I got two verses three through seven. They finally got the, the temple built. And it wasn't the same. They didn't build it exactly to the T. I know uh, that movie, um, Encanto, that my girl, I, I think Ellis has already seen it like 30 times on Disney Plus. And uh, the house in that movie falls to rubble towards the end of the movie. I guess I kind of ruined the movie for everybody. I'm sorry. But then it gets built back. And, and one thing that I, I noticed when it got built back is, you know, from an outsider's perspective, and it may have been just a little different, but to me, everything looked the same. Everything was back in place. Everything was exactly the same. It wasn't the same with this temple. It was built a little different. But it was built by people who cared about the temple. And they did it, they did it their way with God's guidance and with him leading them. It says here in verse 3, it says, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? When I read this verse, I begin to think about that song that my dad sings sometimes, Take Me Back. And if you know the words of that song, it says, Take me back, dear Lord, to where I first started. Take me back to the place where I first found you. Because for most of us, when we first found him, that's when we were so excited. We were on fire. We were hungry. We were thirsty. We couldn't wait for those doors to be open. Couldn't wait for Sunday morning. Couldn't wait for Wednesday night. And then, I don't know about y'all, and this is, I'm preaching to myself this morning. Don't feel like I'm trying to come down on y'all or beat you over the head with a hammer or anything. But over time, sometimes, you get to the point where you're like, you know, you know, this is just, you know, just part of the motions. We're just going through the motions. We're just coming here, you know, hey, I'm back, you know, it's Sunday morning. The excitement's not there. The joy's not there. That's what God wants to bring back. He wants to bring the excitement and the joy. There's, there's people that I've talked to when we talk about, you know, earthly things, they have told me, they said, man, if I hadn't seen this area excited like this since 1980, you know, because we finally got back to, you know, the top of college football. And that struggle, that was, that was a real struggle. You know, 41 years. I begin to think about that you know, sometimes we, we see people like that. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes when we really dig down deep, we say, you know what, I remember that person that was praying, that was reading the word every day, that was on fire for God, and look at me now. Look at me now. now I wish I could go back to that former glory. I wish I could go back to those things. I'm here to tell you, you can. You can. And it may not look the same. It may not even feel the same. But God can restore you. He can restore you to your former glory. In verse 4 here it says, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. According to the covenant that I made with you, when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. For thus the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations 
so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Now, when I was reading this, y'all can laugh if you want to. This is just the way my mind works, all right? I try to make things relatable to people, and uh, this is just me. When I read this verse, all that could keep going through my head was a voice saying, if you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. Now, of course, that's from the movie Field of Dreams. And when somebody, when somebody came out to, uh, to play, it was Sheila Joe Jackson. He said, is this heaven? And he says, no, this is Iowa. I want people, when they come through those doors, to experience God in a way to where they look around and they say, is this heaven? And they say, no, this is Mount Pleasant. This is Mount Pleasant. But this is kind of what heaven's going to be like. It's going to be everything that we could possibly imagine and more. It's going to be amazing. And he said here, the Lord said, I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in and I will fill this house with glory. He promised us that he would. Now, I want to remind us this morning in Acts 2 and 17, on the day of Pentecost, Peter, he preached this message to those 3,000 people. In this huge crowd. And it was coming straight from. This is the message that Jesus told him to preach. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. He's not done with us. He's not done with this church. And he's not done with you. If we will seek him with everything that we've got, if we'll hit our face, if we'll hit our knees, and if we'll get right with God, if we'll get, get obedient with him and say, God, if there's something in place that doesn't need to be there, remove it. That's a tough prayer to pray sometimes. Because sometimes the thing that needs to be removed is something that we hold dear to our heart. And sometimes they can be material things. But you know what? If it's in the way, then it's got to go. If it's getting in the way between me and God, it's got to go. That's how I feel. Because I don't want anything to be blocking my blessing. I don't want any holes in the bottom of my bag that when he pours into me, some of it, you know, fall around all over the place. I want the full blessing. I want to feel the full power of his spirit working inside me. When I begin to read this verse here in Acts 2 and 17, it says, Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, there's a lot of people out there, and maybe some in here this morning, that you say, Well, you know, I'm you know, I'm too I'm, I'm too old, you know, I'm I'm past my prime, you know, it's, you know, God, God just can't, you know, he can't do it in me anymore like, like he, I'm sure that he wants to do. Don't put limitations on God this morning. I want to let you know that when, when Haggai, when he delivered this message, you know how old he was? He was 70 years old. 70 years old. And God used him to speak to these people. He used him to speak these words of correction to them. To say, hey, we got to get back to the main thing. God's house is lying in ruins over there. He wants it built back. So stop whatever you're doing and focus on this. Focus on this. Because you're wondering why you're not getting blessed, it's because you're not focused on this. You wondered why you're sowing and there's no harvest? It's because we're not focused on this. 
we kind of focus on building God's house, building it strong. And as I said earlier, it's all going to start. It's all going to start when we hunger and desire for God to pour His Spirit out into this place amongst us. And then it's going to catch on like wildfire. I'm telling you. When God's Spirit begins to do something inside of this church, and all of a sudden it floods over to Facebook and somebody comments, man, they put on their Facebook, you know, we had some church in Mount Pleasant this morning, you know, God's doing amazing things or something like that. Somebody's going to read it and be like, you know, huh, well maybe we need to go down there and see what's going on down in Mount Pleasant. That's when the house will begin to start beginning to build. Okay? And it might be brick by brick. It's not going to be something, you know, you know, open up the floodgates and everybody's going to come in here. It's just, you know, one, one brick at a time. One brick at a time. But I know that God wants to do something amazing here. If you'll stand with me this morning, I'm going to ask my dad if he'll go ahead and head to the platform.
He's lining everything up. It's been a slow process. And maybe we might outgrow this sanctuary one day. I'd love it. We got a piece of land to put something on right there. We've got somewhere we can go. But I want him to do it right here first. He's got to do it right here first. Right here, right now. So don't play a waiting game with God. Don't wonder why you haven't been blessed. Just begin to give him the praise and the glory that he deserves. And it says there in 2 Chronicles 7.14, it says, pray and seek him. Seek his face. I don't think any of us have any evil ways in here this morning. Maybe you, you know, maybe you do, I don't know. away from the things that's keeping us back. If we'll let go of that bondage that's holding us back from receiving the blessing that he has from us, then I know he'll do something awesome. Let's pray this morning. God, we just thank you for this word. God, I thank you for your promise. God, I thank you for the all the many times that I've experienced your presence in this house. But God, I'm not satisfied with those. God, we need it right now move with the Holy Ghost in this place. We need a right now experience with you so that we can get this house built the way that you want it. God, this church is laid in ruins for long enough. We've sat and watched it. It's time to build this place back the way that you would have to build it. God, I pray that you would just fill us with your desire. Fill us with your hunger, dear Lord. But most importantly, fill us with your presence. God, let us experience that move of the Holy Ghost that we need so that we can get this process going. Because we desire it, dear Lord. We desire you to move in this place greater than ever before. And we know that it's going to start with each and every one of us in this place right now. God, as we begin to open up this altar, I pray that you would just begin to speak to our minds. God, tug on heartstrings this morning. But God, I pray that you would just let us, dear Lord, just let go of the fear. Let go of the past. Let go of anything that's holding us back, dear Lord, and come and seek you the way that you want to be seeked this morning. And God, we know that you'll meet us down here at this place like you have so many times before. Let us be obedient this morning. Let us have courage. Give us strength. Lift us up this morning, dear Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. These altars are open up this morning. I urge you to come spend some time in prayer. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for this church.